hold the gospel banner high. Hold the gospel banner high unto victory grand. Satan and his host fly and shout for Daniel's man. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. Dare to make it known. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Pastor Josh, for leading us in song. Again, good evening and welcome. We're glad to have you with us tonight. Well, where is that rain that has been forecasted all day long? And uh, now I think they're telling us 8 o'clock, but it doesn't look like it's going to rain out there at 8 o'clock. Sure is humid, though. So uh, I don't know about you. I'm not overly disappointed to be indoors here in all this comfort. So we're going to make the best of our evening. Do pray that a couple more of our graduates. And have all the outdoors you want here. Some of us may stay inside and have an ice cream cone or something, but it's all prepackaged stuff, so uh, you make the best of that, but enjoy it as we have opportunity. Just want to remind you again, this coming uh, Tuesday, a big day for at least us. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited because we get to be a, a light here in our community and really seek to help out our community with regard to this COVID-19. And so there's testing going on from 11 to 7. Uh, you can uh, pre-register ahead of time, obviously. That's what pre-register means, I believe. So you can uh, do that on the website or you can just show up. You don't have to pre-register, but uh, it is free. There are no costs involved. They may ask for your insurance. And so if they do that, uh, don't be alarmed. Uh, they'll be taking care of that. Uh, that's between your insurance company and the government. So just uh, comply. But really, it, the process is short, sweet, to the point. The thing gets you in and out, gets you out gets you in and out within 15 minutes or so, so it's not an all-day process. They are accustomed to doing upwards of 50, a half hour. Uh, they bring a whole team in. But that's where the bigger churches, uh, our numbers are not high right now, so I don't think they're going to bring a full team our way. Uh, but some of the churches are running 500 a day or so or 1,000 and so or different places. So anyway, hey, listen, if you'd like to do that, uh sign up show up uh signing up helps them plan though i will tell you that they they asked us if we could sign up that would certainly make their day a little bit easier so if you could help us out along those lines or help them out they then know how many workers to bring with them still looking for a few workers i believe we got about six of us are going to be here uh, throughout the day and again we're just here to help expedite the process be a blessing put a smile on our face and Try to, again, share Christ wherever we get opportunities. And so we're looking forward to doing that this coming Tuesday. Do pray for us. That would be great. Wednesday, uh, we're planning to be back indoors for our prayer meeting service, and that will be at 7 o'clock. And then next Sunday evening, we're going to get back on that schedule again of our regular evening service start time, 6.30. And so we're going to be indoors here at the church, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started at 6.30. And so we hope that that all works out well for you. Uh, keep talking to us. Let us know your pleasure, uh, especially with the morning service. I thought things went well here this morning. I was happy for that. Uh, but as of now, we're planning on being outdoors next Sunday morning again. So we'll be outdoors at 10 o'clock start down on the property. And so, uh, but I still like to hear back from you. If you liked it so much indoors and there was enough of us, maybe we'll stay indoors. That's up to you. Whatever you want to do along those lines, that would be great. Okay, I believe that's all the announcements that I have. And so what we'd like to do is uh, really get started by hearing some of the testimonies of these individuals. And I'm happy to see Oladeje has arrived here. And so uh, we're looking forward to hearing how God has blessed him. So we're going to have Oladeje 
come and just share what God has done in his life these last 12 years of education, his plans for the future. Jaden, if you'd like to follow right after him, that would be great. And uh, then we're going to probably go to Janie, Sarah, and uh, Jarrett will be the, the cleanup hitter here. So that would be great here. That would be good. Sound like a good lineup? I think it sounds like a great lineup. We're looking forward to hearing what you have. So, old days, you come on up here and share with us what God has done and what the plans are for the future. You come on up here. We'll be glad to give you the mic here and speak out to our folks. Good evening, church. It is, a it is a pleasure and honor to be celebrated by the church family. My name is Oladeji Fabuesa. I graduated from Franklin High School. Um, I received AP Scholar and Key Club Volunteering Awards. Some of the activities I was involved in during my high school years were, were robotics, physics Olympiad club, CS club, Model UN, stock market club, med tech, and Key Club. Robotics was one of the best clubs where I was highly involved. I was responsible for the software aspects of the club, which was mainly programming the robots for the team and teaching my colleagues, freshmen and sophomore how to program. Sometimes I would help them building the robot as well. This club wasn't only a hobby for me, but it determined my career path I chose in college. This was the most impactful club I ever participated in while in high school. One of the blessings I received during my high school years was able to participate in the teens Wednesday night services at Kendall Park Baptist Church. Wednesday, night, Wednesday teen services is where the word of God is being taught to teens besides the Sunday services. Teens club also gave me the opportunity to be involved in extracurricular activities such as trips, for example, snow tubing, laser tags, and so on. This is a great avenue for me to interact with my church family, especially the teens. My plans for the future. This, is, this fall, I will be attending Rutgers University in New Brunswick, majoring in computer science. Initially, I was going to major in mechanical engineering, but I had a change of interest due to my falling in love with programming and my robotics team. Here I am majoring in computer science. Specific prayer requests. Future regarding my future. My prayer request is to be a man of God, serve him and live for him all the days of my life and not to make any wrong decisions while in college. I would like to thank my mom and dad for making this day possible. They have been there since for me, since I was born and they are still there for me at every step I take. How do I start? Is it when they sought extra help for me when I needed assistance with my chemistry class? I had a tutor coming in to the house to help me with my schoolwork. I got extra help for the SAT, ACT at Princeton Preparatory School. I will forever be indebted to my parents for going out of their way to make sure I succeed in all my study. Amen. My mom always gave me emotional support anytime I felt down because of stuff that happened in school. She always prays and always assures me that everything will be fine. She uses her life experiences and story to uplift my spirit. My brothers, especially Olamide, though we always have misunderstandings, he's very helpful too. I am grateful to God for my family and I love them all very much. Kendall Park Baptist Church played a role in my life as well. They opened me to the word of God, teaching me the word of God, helping me with my walk with the Lord and always praying for me, which shows they are thinking about me. I want to thank Pastor Brown and Pastor Josh for always keeping up with me. Pastor Josh also wrote a letter of recommendation for me concerning one of the scholarships I was applying for, which was later canceled because of COVID-19. Thank you, sir. All glory goes to God because he has provided, strengthened, and guided me throughout my life. He is the Alpha and Omega. He, he that started a good thing in life will surely see me through in Jesus' mighty name testimony of salvation goes like this. Um, one Sunday service, I heard a message from Pastor Brown about salvation and how he talked about how God cares more about a relationship with him rather than religion. The message continued that if one does not have a personal relationship with God and receive Jesus Christ as 
personal savior that one needs to submit to him so that one can be joint heir with Christ in his kingdom. I know I was not saved after the service I spoke to with Pastor Dallas wanting to become saved. He took me to Pastor Brown's office where they took time to introduce the scripture to me. After that, I prayed and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to become my Lord and Savior on March 19th, 2017. After my salvation, I got baptized at the church and I officially became a member of the Kendall Park Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was a blessing, brother. Praise the Lord. Hey, listen, we have a small gift that we'd like to give you. Just a token of our appreciation for you. Thank we you. trust it will be a blessing to you as you head forward. Thank you for your testimony. It was powerful. God bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Jaden, come on up here. That'd be great. Uh, hi, I'm Jaden Daniel. Uh, I'm graduating from uh, St. Joe's High School. It's in the touching. Uh, I received... Uh, awards for uh, excellence in music and the Sacred Car Award for Computer Club. And I was in Computer Club band and I was doing uh, yearbook and publications. Uh, I, I feel blessed, you know, to be able to, you know, go to private school and like, you know, it's a very good school. And a lot of kids, you know, they don't have that type of blessing. And I didn't, you know, do anything to deserve. It's all like God's grace. And uh, for the future, I'm going to Rutgers University uh, for engineering, computer science engineering. And a specific request for my future is probably for discernment. You know, you know, Pastor always made a point to tell me, you know, it's going to be like very, very difficult in college. A lot of, you know, snakes in the grass. So uh, I, I just want discernment, be able to tell right from wrong, you know, what to do, and that wisdom from God. Uh, I don't think, you know, none of this would have been possible without, you know, the incessant prayers of my family, my mom, my dad, my aunties, uncles, and my pastors. Uh, Kennel Park Baptist Church, you know, they've, uh, you know, I've been with them, you know, 10, 10, more than 10 years. You know, I know, like, I've been in their prayers. Uh, I was able, you know, to participate in, you know, uh, I want to, you know, lead in C-Club, you know, it helped. Like, as I helped other kids and as I, you know, studied, it helped get a more grounding into scripture. And, you know, all glory goes to God, you know, no matter what. Uh, anywhere, like everywhere, it could have went wrong. Uh, you know, I could have went off the deep end. I could have, you know, there's always that those could have, those what ifs. But I feel, you know, it was God's will that, you know, I somehow kept striving on. Uh, I was saved in uh, third grade. My third grade teacher, Miss Stevens, she she was, she's she's wonderful. Uh, she walked me through Bible. She she's a very good teacher, you know, and she cared about her students, and I, I respect that. And it's the journey too, like, you know, over the years, I've learned to grow with Christ, and you know, learn more about Him, you know, in church. My dad, you know, we talk a lot. Yeah, it's. It's great. I, <laughs> sometimes a little too fiery, right? Yeah. But it's great. Uh, it, it's only by God. You know, if 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 it wasn't for God, I, I don't think I'd have been been here. You know, I've been talking to y'all. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, uh, I know he's a debater. Hey, yes, praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, Miss Stevens, I, 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 she came to your baptism, I believe. Right? She did, she yes. She did, I remember her coming here. Yes, that was a real blessing there as well. So I was excited about that. This guy's a computer whiz. Uh, I think he can take them apart in his sleep and put them all back together. He's been a real help with us with regard to the, uh, the video programming that we have going on here. He's spent a lot of hours over here with us as well. And so really has helped us and he runs uh, the program back there. So. Uh, we're very thankful for Jaden and trust that God will bless you as you go forward here. Thank you, Again, uh, congratulations, a little small gift here to appreciate remember it. us, you, and we appreciate you as well. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's see. Who did I say next? Is it Janie? Come on up, Janie. Yep, that would be great. Um, 
my name is Janie, and oh, well, my Chinese name is Jian Yu Zhao, and my English name is Janie. Um, you know, it's important, you know? I, my friends sometimes laugh at me, like, why do you have to insist on teaching us your Chinese name? I was like, come on, that's my name, you gotta learn. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it is important. Anyway, so um, I received my uh, bachelor's degree and mas master's degree in Westminster Choir College, and I just graduated this semester, and um, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we can't have a graduation. So it really, really means a lot for me to have today. Thank you. Um, so I am um, going towards my doctor's degree in uh, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, which is a very long name. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm getting my, um, it's, a, it's a DMA, it's a doctorate degree in music, but uh, I'm really glad it's like the, the seminary because Ever since I came here, I was actually thinking, you know, I always wanted school that had the Christian background. Actually, before I came to Westminster, I thought it does, but actually, you know, it actually didn't. So that was a surprising and a lot of culture shock. But anyways, praise be to God that I went through all those, and now I'm continuing finally to my doctorate degree in a place where we have Christian background, the same background where, you know, people won't look at me as I act weirdly. Um, uh, where was I? <laughs> no, I just got this form in the new one, so I was kind of improvising right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I really want to thank um, my parents for supporting me so far, um, both for the education on, and for my Christian background. Because as you probably know, in China, it's, we are in a pretty hard situation with you know, the Christianity part. So um, they really mean a lot to me to help me to keep steady in my faith. And um, I really want to thank Kinder Park Baptist Church to help me. Also um, to have a church family here to be steady in my faith. And um, uh, special thanks to Miss Brown Miss Wall, Miss Wall for always, you know, giving me the right to church and give the right back. And also to Charlotte and Melanie as well. Melanie is not here today, but I have to say special thanks to her because um, she, um, during the pandemic, it was like the first few months, um, because Westminster moved to Lawrenceville campus. And I was like, I don't know anybody over there. I'm not close to anywhere. So I really appreciate her for keeping me accompanied. So she shared a Bible verse with me, and sometimes we um, message, each other, message each other, and that really means a lot. Hey. <laughs> um, oh, yes, and Kennel Park, Park Baptist Church played a, a very important role in my life because I got saved here uh, in, I believe that's October 2017. I was also, that was also right after Pastor Brown's preach. After that, I feel like so moved, my heart was like, yep, it's, this is the time. And I also got baptized here, and uh, that's very meaningful. And uh, I actually have a very funny story. I remember <laughs> when I got baptized over there, I thought everybody is supposed to look really fancy even when they got baptized. So I heard that, you know, like my Sunday dress and then went in there and then realized everybody else was like simple. I was like, and then the thing is, because my dress was all fancy, it absorbed too much water, and uh, I accidentally slipped down the stairs. Uh, that was that was funny and kind of embarrassing. But anyways, <laughs> thank you. Anyways, that still means a lot. And I um, all the glories had to be God, like be to God, praise to God for everything I have, for helping my not only my family, you know still to keep going with our Christianity and uh, the Christian education that my parents is in. And um, also for everything, all the, all the trials and temptations that we went through. And also in here, um, during this pandemic, everything thanks and praise be to God for keeping me safe, for keeping me still, I'm still healthy and strong. 
And um, even if in Westminster, when we don't have the Christian background, I could still stand steady on my faith. And I, um, I've also, I've been uh, in the Bible studies in Westminster, because although we don't have that much Christians, um, but we still have a Bible study. And I have been um, a Bible study leader in the past few years too. So that was, that was such a blessing. Um, oh, so um, I have a specific, specific prayer request is because I'm moving to Texas and still, <laughs> yes, amen. Um, especially during this pandemic, it's not very easy. So prayers that um, everything still goes on fine over there. And um, also um, for the classes. I hope that I still can have, you know, online class with face-to-face -face class to make sure that I can still stay here instead of being kicked out. So that is also very important. So prayers for that too, and also prayers for my family, please. Thank you so much. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord, Danny. Amen. You're a blessing. Praise the Lord. If you ever decide or drop out of your major, you can be a comedian. <laughs> Maybe that's what you can do. You try that. That could be your day job. So, hey, listen, thank we'd like to give you. you a little card and say thank you for thank the blessing you've been, and we will be praying for you, thank you as you move forward. So keep on keeping on. Amen. Praise the Lord. All righty. See ya. Sarah, come on up here. That would be wonderful. Hi everyone. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm Sarah. Um, I just graduated in May from Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Um, I graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Public Health and a Bachelor's of Art in Spanish. Um, I graduated with honor, so I graduated um, magna cum laude. Um, some of the uh, words and honors I had um, during my time at Rutgers, I was a part of um, a National Spanish Honor Society, Sigma Delta Pi. And I was also part of a National Health Education um, Honorary, so that's related to public health. It was called Eta Sigma Gamma. Um, part of that same club, I was the vice president of it. So basically, some of the things I did was organizing different events. We did um, like joint events with other clubs and also our induction ceremonies whenever we had new members come in. So I was in charge of kind of planning them and organizing them, inviting people and things like that. Um, something else that I was involved in um, was the Rutgers University Programming Association. So um, most people think it's, a, it's related to computer science, but it's actually um, an event planning um, um, organization. So basically what we did was um, plan like about 150 to 200 different like campus-wide events. Um, so my position for that, I was, the, um, I was an assistant director of the community service committee. So we did different community service related events. Um, just an example, we have a, an event called Scarlet Day of Service. So that's an event that we have and we um, partner up with different organizations throughout New Jersey and we bus students throughout the state and they do different little projects and things like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, besides that, um, I had the opportunity to go on two Global Brigade trips. One I did in 2018, I went to Nicaragua and a second one I did last um, summer and I went to Panama. So those are kind of like medical service trips that I did. I got to learn um, hands-on type of skills and shadowing doctors and things like that. So it was a really good opportunity. Um, besides that, I also did a couple internships um, during Rutgers. Um, they're just you know good for networking and I learned a lot on the job, I guess. Um, anyway, <laughs> besides that, so my next step is to begin graduate school as Pastor kind of already mentioned. Um, so I'll be um, going for my master's in public health, so it's just kind of the next step. Um, I'll be going to Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's a two-year program, so I won't be gone for too long, and I'll still be coming, I'll still be coming home. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll be moving down there um, actually this week, and I'll start classes on the 17th. And um, it's going to be obviously a little bit different from undergrad, there'll be a little bit more research. It's a research-based kind of institution. So it's definitely going to be a little bit demanding, but I'm super excited about it. Um, I think I'm going to learn a lot there. Um, 
Uh, in terms of testimony, so over the years, Kenna Park Baptist Church has played a huge role in my life. Um, I attended Sunday school in Awana from an early age. Um, I was about four or five when I accepted Jesus as my personal savior. In 2008, I was baptized and I became a member of the church. Since then, I've been involved in different ministries, um, including special music, choir, children's church, and other things. Um, so I've had a lot of blessings um, in the past four years. I think one of the biggest blessings that I've had, I guess, would would I would definitely be that I was still involved with the church because I was commuting from school. I was able to still um, be a part of the church and be involved in um, in Awana um, and, like I said, different um, ministries. Um, I personally, I really, really look forward to Friday nights um, so I could just be at church and um, working with the kids too. I just really enjoyed it, seeing them grow. Um, so in general, yeah, college was a difficult experience. You know, there's a lot of things that I've learned and I'm super thankful for you know, everyone who's helped me along the way. First, um, all glory goes to God because I wouldn't be here um, where I am today without him. Um, God is, was with me for every step along the way. Um, just remembering that he was in control and he's in control before and he's gonna be in control. Um, thank you to my family. I was trying not to cry. Yeah, I cry every week too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think you have to do um, thank you to my family for reminding me to eat and sleep regularly. <laughs> and um, just help helping me to be less stressed. And um thank you. Thank you also my church family for all your <laughs> All your love and support for the last four years. Thank you for your prayers and your guidance all the way. <laughs> um, in terms of prayer requests, there's just a couple things that I just want to pray about. Um, um, first for me, just to get, remember to keep God first. Um, you know, college is always going to be um, stressful no matter where you go. And just um, praying that I trust in him um, for everything. Um, second thing, obviously, I'm, I'm moving down to Georgia, so finding a church. Um, so I, I'm not going to have a car down there, so I'm going to have to rely on um, public transportation mostly. So there's, it's, I'm kind of limited in the churches that I'm able to go to. And in the area that I'll be in, there's a couple churches there. Um, right now, as of I know of right now, they're having online services. So I have a bit of time before I um, have to find a church, I guess, so I can do that online. So just praying that I find the right church. Um, and uh, another prayer request is also living on my own. So I'll be living in an apartment there, um, down in Georgia. So a couple things related to that. Um, one, to pray, obviously, for health, you know, with the coronavirus still going on, um, just that I'm staying safe. Um, uh, so my classes will actually be um, in person. So just um, staying safe with with that um and then also it's like safety in general you know i'll be in a new state um just being safe in general um and the third thing is um balancing um school and you know living on my own and just different um challenges that might happen um that you know you can't predict um so just remembering all of that and um and everything just you know keeping god first so just if you could pray for that that would be appreciated um, and yeah, I'll just be moving down this week and I'll be back home probably for Christmas. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> hey, man, here's a little card. Double major, not yeah. so easy. Uh, double major, pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially uh, Spanish isn't your first language. No. But yeah, so. Yes, I guess you can if you got a, a bachelor's in it. Yeah, it's very good. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Brother Jared, come on up here. Amen. All right.
right. You might see there on my slide it says I am next going to be sleeping in. That is because <laughs> unlike all of the other graduates in our class this year, I am not doing anything at all. Um, yes, at the behest of my wife, um, once uh, now that I have uh, finally completed my MBA. It has been a much longer process than either myself or my wife uh, anticipated. Uh, before I even get started, I have to tell her thank you, uh, because I know that uh, this was maybe not uh, what we had planned. This wasn't the, the time frame that we planned, and uh, I know that a lot of the stress and a lot of the burden has fallen on her as I try to get things done in a timely manner or forget to get things done in a timely manner, which adds extra stress and uh, a lot of you guys had the opportunity to, and you talked about all the accomplishments and awards uh, that you were able to uh, either participate in or you were able to accomplish throughout your career. I am just happy that I made it to the end. Um, I participated in no clubs. I participated in no extracurriculars. I did not do anything except for work, eat, sleep, and try to finish my classes on time. Uh, I was successful a about 30% of the time. So um, if you want to look at my GPA, I'll let you look at it, but I am, you know, I'll just, I might write it down and show it to you later. I just, uh, it was a lot more difficult than I ever anticipated trying to go to work full time, uh, try to participate in all of the things that uh, were involved with here and whether it was here or in the previous ministry, uh, to have four young kids on top of it uh, and still be able to, to pull a any kind of uh, credit load at the same time. So those were my clubs. My clubs were KPBC, uh, Emma, Kaylin, Isla, Josiah, and uh, most of all, Laura. So those were the clubs that I was involved in. I was getting there, babe, I promise. So if, if I had one thing uh, that I would challenge uh, those that are heading into college, um, and, and not the ones who have already graduated from college going into master's works. You guys have had a little bit of an exposure uh, to some of the stuff that I'm going to encourage the, the younger people with, and that is don't be in a hurry. So you've got plenty of time to do a lot of things when you're done, but you've only got, unless you're like me, you've only got one shot at the college part. And so to be involved and appreciate the opportunity that you have that a lot of people do not have. I know that colleges have, have become more prevalent, but there's still a large part of the population that doesn't get that opportunity, and, and it is something unique in your life, and it is some of the best times of your life. And don't spend all of it in the library, but spend enough of it in the library to do a good job. Okay? Don't spend it all playing games and goofing off either. Uh, I have a couple verses that I wanted to read from Proverbs chapter 28. It says, he that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Your friends and your idols and your role models are extremely important. A faithful man shall abound with blessing, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. If you choose a career based on money, you choose a um, course of study based on the check at the end and not your love for what you're going to be doing, or most of all, your relationship with God, first and foremost, you won't come out of it innocent. That career may make you a lot of money, but as Proverbs says uh, in the following verse, to have a respect of persons is not good, for for a piece of bread that man, that man will transgress. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. KPBC for us has been um, extraordinarily um, generous. Uh, has been an opportunity for us to uh, work alongside of Pastor and now uh, Pastor Josh uh, to get to know these, these individuals, to support them, to encourage them hopefully to provide opportunities uh, that they can work on other things and maybe we can work on some, some other things behind the scenes. Um, I have always had a love for um, working with children. Even when I was in high school, I, I went and worked with the younger kids. That, that age group, that elementary age group has always been a huge 
um, joy for me to participate and work with, teach, interact with, uh, mostly because I'm a big kid myself. I like goofing off. I like not being serious. Um, yeah, exactly. So I, if I make it through all of this, I'll be good. Um, but I have had a unique, a unique opportunity here at KPBC to, to run the C-Club uh, ministry with my wife. It's been a huge blessing for um, both my kids and my wife. Uh, and myself to be able to to put back uh, into that and we look forward to the time we get yes it is tiring yes it gets to be especially as you grow later in the year uh, something that um, you look at it as a as a time constraint uh, but at the same time it is something that uh, gives you a blessing you cannot get anywhere else and we have extremely uh, enjoyed very extraordinarily enjoyed uh, the time that we have with them I know I get entangled up but um, my salvation, I know that we gave it when we joined the church, uh, but I was saved at a very young age. Uh, my grandfather was my pastor at the time. Uh, he was actually the one who led me to the Lord. Uh, I had a very um, heavily involved home in the church. My grandfather was my pastor. My father was the Christian school administrator. My mother was the church and school secretary. Um, my dad taught me in five or six different classes when I was in high school. Um, that was per year, not just total. Uh, he was also my coach in at least three different sports, uh, sometimes four, depending on the year and which ones I was involved in. Uh, my family was very, very much involved in, in a very small Christian work down there. And uh, to come out of that and get to college and still question my salvation was frightening for me but I know that I was saved when I was younger but for me to come all the way through that for me to be involved in all of those things when I was younger and still to get to my college years and not have concrete assurance is something that I challenge the youth that I, when I was involved with them and anyone I get a chance to talk to about it is that you need to know for sure. If you don't have a strong foundation, you can't build anything on it. Uh, I could walk the walk. I could talk the talk. I could. I, I had all of the outward trappings of it, but I knew because of the sin in my heart, something wasn't like something didn't compute. If I was saved, why am I still acting this way? And that was a real struggle for me um, as I grew older. Uh, but I cemented it when I was in college through learning and studying the Word of God. Not necess I didn't grow into salvation. I was saved at a very young age. But my understanding of God took a long time to mature and develop outside of that outward, I'm going to do good because that's what's expected of me because you guys know my dad's the principal and you guys know my grandfather was the former pastor and you got like all of those things that I felt pressured to act a certain way and yet I was uh, on the inside struggling. And so... If you are sitting here today, and I hate to take your time, but if you are sitting here today and you don't have that foundation, especially if you're getting ready to walk away from your home, if you're getting ready to walk away from your circle of security, that is something that really needs to be concrete uh, before you take that step. So I do want to thank my wife more than anyone else. She has had to put up with a lot. Um, she has had to deal with a lot. She has encouraged me numerous times she has tried to stay up as I write papers um, most of the time she did not succeed uh, but uh, it is no fun trying to sit there and watch somebody clack away on a keyboard but um, I am appreciative that the degree is finished I'm appreciative for the experience but I am looking forward as the slide says to sleeping in in the future so thank you Laura thank you KPBC uh, for these opportunities Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hey, brother, here's a card, thank and uh, thank you for, again, accomplishing great things. Anybody notice anything special about this guy here lately here? <laughs> I just have to tell you, he is dropping weight like it's going out of style. I don't know if anybody noticed that or not. Love that. Six, six, <laughs> well, he hasn't dropped any of them, but he's dropped about 60 pounds here. I know his wife is doing the same, but yeah. uh, good night. I'm telling you, he's a new guy. New suits every week. Kind of show. 
I'll tell you how bad it was. He came into church one day. He had a suit on. I said, oh, did you get a new suit? He said, no, I finally got back in an old suit there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I said, oh, man, I didn't notice. But, hey, praise the Lord. Congratulations. An MBA is not an easy degree to get. So uh, some of you know that. Uh, some of you have it. I believe Reuben has an MBA back there. And so pretty tough degree to get. So I would not be apologizing for not being in any club. Uh, he has a club right under his own nose every every day. He can, he's, uh, he's working with a family and church family, and so there's a lot of responsibility there. Well, hey, praise the Lord. We're grateful for that, and I'm grateful for getting rid of this here. Uh, brother, I know we're supposed to sing another song, but, you know, for the sake of time, why don't we just hold off on that song, if that's good with you. Uh, I, I feel bad for Betty. You sat here on the organ the whole time here, so we're going to just say, uh, for the sake of time, let's go right into the Word of God and use our time here uh, uh, because the hour is slipping away from us here tonight. So let's take our Bibles in. And turn to uh, the book of uh, 2 Samuel, chapter 7. 2 Samuel, chapter 7. And uh, I want to say thank you again for all of you that shared with us tonight. That was a rich, rich blessing. I, I love to hear how God is working in your lives and what he's accomplished. And, and uh, just uh, that, was, that was so good to hear. So thank you for participating, you graduates, and congratulations and I hope and pray that we will remember you often before the Lord as you uh, take these next steps in your, in your walk with the Lord in different places and colleges. And so uh, we're excited for you. So praise God. Second Samuel chapter 7 is the, uh, the chapter you should be open to. A very familiar passage of Scripture. Let me just tell you, this is one of these uh, really profound passages. It's really dealing with... Um, uh, a covenant that God is going to make with David, and it's an unconditional. There are no conditions that David needs to make with regard to this condition. Unlike what we've been talking about in the morning services the last two weeks, uh, you know, where God begins, if my people, there's a condition there, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, do these things, then that's conditional. There's no condition with this one here. It's really profound. And the condition or the unconditioned is that God is going to bless David in such a way that from his lineage will come a king that will rule forever and ever and ever. And uh, it's not simply a reference to, again, a physical uh, uh, following such as Solomon and all the kings, but, but to the Lord Jesus, the greater of David's. Uh, who will rule and reign on this earth forever and ever. And, of course, he will come from the lineage, physically speaking, as well from David. In fact, so much so that uh, I just had to tell you, and then we're going to pray and try to get into this. But, you know, I was, uh, in some of my notes I was going over and looking this over today, I was thinking of Benjamin Netanyahu. And I wondered, uh, I, wondered I, I thought, what tribe is Benjamin Netanyahu from? Uh, and I was just curious to see if, if some of the handwriting is maybe on the wall with even who is the current prime minister of Israel. Uh, I could not find it very easily. The, the best I could get, though, they think that he might be out of the tribe of Benjamin with a name like Benjamin Netanyahu. I did read a little bit about his father comes from Poland and his mother was, I think, there from, uh, from Israel. And, of course, uh, if you know anything about Benjamin Netanyahu, he did some studying here in the United States. Uh, he spent a number of years, and that's why his English is so good, if you ever listen to him speak. And so, uh, really uh, an interesting individual. But I was wondering, boy, could that be another sign that, hey, we are getting closer and closer, uh, you know, to the coming king, the king of kings. Anyway, this passage is a great passage. Uh, it spells out the hope for Israel. It really deals with the future of Israel. And I want to use this text really to try to encourage our graduates here tonight, and really all of us. It deals with David's past his present, and his future. I think you'll see all three of these things right here in this one text. And so let's ask God's blessing on the ministry of his word, and then we're going to try to do the best we can in getting through this as fast as we can here. Uh, Father, I, I know that that's not a good combination, trying to fly through the study of your word. There's a lot here in this text. And so I do pray that you would guide me here tonight to, to share what needs to be shared, nothing more, nothing less, but enough that would certainly, again, encourage our graduates and really speak to the hearts of all of us. For all of us, Lord, have a past, a present, and a future, uh, as did David. And uh, we can learn some things with regard to David and his life. And I pray that we're able to draw some application to our own lives. And so, Lord, direct uh, the time that we have uh, in accordance with the teaching of your word. May the Spirit of God, again, be our teacher here tonight. May you get glory, and we're going to thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Second uh, Samuel chapter 7, look at uh, one uh, verse. I, I want to deal with remembering your past. And I want to remind you here that it's, uh, it's hard to believe, but all of us have a past. Uh, sometimes we think that that was so far you know, in the past that we, we forget some things. But I, I want us to just take a few minutes tonight and remember our past. David had a past, and we're going to look at that. And we're going to see that here in 2 Samuel 7, verse 8, where the Bible says, Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David. Now you have to understand that this is, um, this is God speaking through the prophet Nathan. Uh, David had a, had a desire to build a permanent dwelling place for God here in, on earth in, in Jerusalem. And, uh, and Nathan at first thought it was a good idea, but then God came to Nathan and said, Hey, Nathan, it's not a good idea. That's, that work is not for David to do. Go tell David that, that that's not going to be the case. So Nathan now has the unfortunate uh, pleasure of going back to the king and saying, Oh, by the way, that conversation we had before, God has revealed to me it's not going to be on your watch. It's going to be on your son's watch. And, uh, and so he's going to scrap the plans per se. David will still use his time well and wisely in preparing for it, even though he will not have the privilege of actually building the temple. So we're reading in verse 8 where it says, God is speaking to Nathan, Now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat. Now I just want to stop right there and say, I took thee is past tense. Uh, God took David from the sheep coat. The sheep coat really is a, is a, is a, a, a word that describes uh, the, the place or the home of sheep, uh, where they dwell. I took you from being a shepherd. I took you from caring for sheep. Uh, I want to remember where you came from. I want you to remember your past, David. Uh, let's not get past that. Uh, to some, that would not be the most notable position. Some would not maybe brag about, hey, listen, I, I'm a shepherd of sheep. I want you to be encouraged with this, though. I want you to know where David went from, the, from shepherding sheep to shepherding God's people. He became the king of Israel. He became a king that is revered to this day. So, so sometimes we look at our past and say, well, you know, man, I don't have a lot to really boast about or brag about. There was nothing great or nothing exciting. Hey, listen, God had you where he wanted you to have you. Uh, God was working in your life. I provided we were willing for God. And God can make something of our life. So let's not get hung up on our past and, and maybe some of the, the, the experiences. That we, hey, God can do some phenomenal things with us as we yield our life to the Lord. David's just out there taking care of sheep. And he says, I want you to remember this. So he says, I, I took thee from the sheep coat. I'm wondering, as, uh, as David was uh, reflecting on maybe some of his past, uh, when God reminded him through this prophet Nathan, I, I wondered if David could maybe go to the specific place where he took on that bear with his bare hands. I mean, I, I think that that would be an unforgettable experience. Hey, listen, uh, if you went to me out to the pasture, hey, I want to take you over to this place here, and I want to show you where God worked through me and allowed me to defend these sheep with my bare hands. I took on this bear. I took on this lion. Here was the place. Uh, maybe, maybe there were some things about it. Hey, I want you to remember where you came from. Maybe he could go out to maybe his favorite places out there in the pasture where, where he could just look up at the starry skies and, just, and just, just be in awe at the creator God who spoke those things into existence. I don't know, but David had a past, and David could probably take you down that trail of memory lane and, and show you some of these significant places. Maybe he could take you to the place where he was out there taking care of his sheep, being obedient to his father. When, when the call came, hey, David, you're wanted at home. Uh, there, there's some prophet by the name of Samuel that has come to our house. David had no idea what was in store for him. Samuel? Samuel's visiting us? Who are we for Samuel to come to our house? Not only to find out that this great prophet took time to come to David's home, but then to anoint him. David had a life of fear, but he had a life of courage. He had a past, just as you and I do. Graduates, you have a past. We did a stroll down memory lane this past week, uh, uh, Michelle and I were visiting with my mother, and uh, we went out to dinner, got a bite to eat. They can eat outside in, or in restaurants up there in Pennsylvania. Still not there yet here in New Jersey, but anyway, uh, 
So we got a bite to eat, and then I said, uh, I gave my mom several options as far as things to do, and just trying to keep her busy and occupied, and enjoy some sweet time together. And uh, anyway, she couldn't make up her mind as to really why. I said, you know what, let's just go visit the old homestead. She lived in this house for 27 years. And she hadn't been back for a long time. I said, let's go back and see the old church there. Now, she's still part of the same parish, but they moved out. And so we just kind of took a, a stroll down memory lane, went to the old church and went uh, by the high school where she put all her kids through uh, the home. Uh, met the current resident that is the resident that bought the house really through a contractor after my parents moved out. Uh, there's a major fire in the house, and so that's why my parents moved out of that house. And so there's a contractor came in and rebuilt the place. And, and uh, this person has been living in there for 20-plus years or so since my, my parents had moved out. So anyway, we were doing this, and, and she was just loving it. She was just enjoying living in the past, remembering. Oh, you remember I lived, lived here, and you remember? I don't wonder how they're doing it. Hey, the past has gotten us to where we are. Don't forget the past. Now, I don't live in the past. But I don't want to remember the past. Uh, there's good and there's bad, and there's in between all of that. But I, I like to say that the past has been good to me. It has gotten me to where I am today. And graduates, it has gotten you to where you are as well. Don't forget your roots. It's good to be reminded that we all probably came from some small beginnings. I don't believe any of us here tonight, any of our graduates were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I don't believe that that was the case. And I'd like to remind you, in light of where you have come from, hey, listen, stay humble. Stay thankful. Don't let any success ever get to your head. Remember your past. Stay grounded in that sense. Spiritually, you had a past as well. And I was blessed to hear your testimonies. A number of you getting saved at young ages. Uh, what a testimony. That's now in the past. But, but never forget your testimony of salvation. Uh, that's something that you're going to take with you into all of eternity. It is something that you will rejoice uh, uh, with in eternity. God reached down from the glories of heaven and saved your soul. What a past. Remember again, not just your, your testimony of salvation, but your baptism and your church affiliation. And the people, again, that God has used uh, in your past to, again, help you get to where you are. Academically, you have learned a lot. You have grown. You have matured. Remember your teachers. Remember your classmates. Uh, remember, again, these are people that helped you to get to where you are. So, hey, you have a past. God is reminding David, hey, I took you from the sheep coat. You had a past. You're king now. Yes, I understand it. But this is where you were. Don't forget it. Relish your present. Relish your present in the sense that, hey, listen, it's, it's, only, it's the only time that you have. You, ne you cannot recapture the past. You cannot undo the past. You cannot change the past. The past is over. But relish the present time that we have. Uh, I want us to again look at David's present here and, and, uh, in accordance with the text again. In uh, that same verse, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8, he goes on and says, Now therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David. There are going to be five things that are listed in verses 7 and 8 here. Number one, uh, David, I want you to know that you are my servant. He goes on and tells us in that text, verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people over Israel. That's number two. You are my servant, you are my ruler. Verse 9, And I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest. I was with thee, and still am with you, David. That's present tense. And have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight. God has delivered David from numerous enemies. And number five, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of great men that are in the earth. Five things out of these two verses here. David, you are my servant. You know, I wonder if David had his days of discouragement, maybe even neglect, maybe where he even felt that he was unworthy. But God comes alongside of David and says, hey, listen, David, I want you to know that you are currently and have been and Lord willing forever will be my servant, my servant, an honorable title. Sometimes we look down upon servanthood as dishonorable. It couldn't be further from the truth when it comes to serving the God of heaven to be called a servant of God what a high and holy calling of God. 
to think that God would accept our service, enough so much so that he would call us his servant. He's accepting what we render unto him. David was God's ruler, and we're very familiar with that. Not a shabby position by any stretch of the imagination. David apparently had used his time in the past well and wisely. He prepared for the future, and now the future has come to him. He's living in the present, ruling the very people of God. David, again, moving from shepherding sheep to shepherding, again, the people of God, a high and holy calling. And again, David goes down in history as one of the greatest kings to ever rule Israel. He is revered by many to this day. Quickly, God's presence. He said, I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest. God is present with you, David. I want you to know that. God is with you wherever you go. You, you cannot escape God. After all, David knew something about that. Read Psalm 139 in its entirety. We quote it, verses 23 and 24 this morning. But read this. Hey, listen, I cannot get away from God. Wherever I go, God will be with me. That is an encouragement to us. I am thankful that I have the, the presence of God with me in my walk, in my journey here on this side of eternity. And certainly David had that as well. He had God's peace. He cut off the enemies out of his sight. David had numerous enemies. In fact, it was these enemies that really kept David from building the temple in the first place. Uh, David had this desire to build, but you'll read in other texts where God said, No, you're a man of war, David. Your hands are bloody hands. You have done a lot of fighting in your life. You're not to be the man to build this temple. Your son will have that privilege, but not you. Now listen, I'm happy for individuals that pave the way for the next generation. I'm happy for the guys like David that, again, secured, as it were, the kingdom. Solomon expanded the kingdom uh, to its largest uh, 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 position in, in, I believe, its history. And so, so Solomon had a, had a, really came on the heels of a, of, a, of a great father who really laid out all the groundwork, did all the groundwork, and really prepared for all of that. And then certainly ensuring him with the peace by cutting off the enemies. And then in verse 9, again, a great name. A great name. I have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. David's name is right up there with regard to some of the greatest names. David not only had power and dominion in Israel, but he had honor and reputation among other nations as well. It wasn't just his own people that revered him. It was other nations. Oh, that's David. He had great relationships with other kings, other authorities, other powers. God had given him this great name. He had become famous for his courage, his conduct, his great achievements, and more, and more was talked of this individual than any other man of his day. David, I have given you a great name. There's great reason to be thankful. The Bible would remind us that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. A good name is better than precious ointment. God told Abraham that I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And certainly, again, Abraham is revered, but so is David. David is right on up there. So verses seven, or chapter 7, verses 8 and 9 tell us just five quick things about David's presence. He is a servant of God. He's ruling for God. He has the presence of God. He has the peace of God upon his life. And as a result of, again, his walk with the Lord, he's making a great name for himself and for the glory of God. But that doesn't end there. If you read on in the text, when you come down here to verse 10 and 11, the Bible goes on and says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. I want you to know this, that David had God's people, as it were, really in the palm of his hand because of what God was doing for him. And so God is going to give God's people a place as a result of David ruling. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in the place of their own. Hey, listen, they had not been in a place of their own. They, again, had been, had been moving through, and yes, they came into the promised land, and, and there were a lot of uh, challenges in establishing the territories and establishing themselves, but, but uh, here comes Saul, and he doesn't last long, and then David and says, hey, listen, I'm going to give you my people, and I'm giving you a permanent place to dwell. 
He goes on and says in uh, that verse, and they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. God's hedge of protection is going to be upon his people, and David is going to have the privilege of being their leader. More can be said about that, but I want you to just hear one other point here quickly, and that would be in a different text, and we don't have time to look at it. But it would be in Psalm 78, verses uh, 70 to 72. And I think this is probably one of the greatest testimonies as far as David's presence, his present time. The Bible says, He chose David also his servant, already covered that territory, and took him from the sheepfolds. Already covered it. Then it goes on and says, From following the ewes, great and young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel's and Israel his inheritance. And so God is telling us here that, hey, David has become the servant of the Lord. He has a past. He took him from the sheepfold. He's now using him to feed the very people of God. And then it says in verse 72 this, so he fed them, that's David, fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. The integrity of his heart. God says, hey, listen, I'm going to make you a servant. I'm going to have you be a ruler. I'm going to have my presence there with you. Your, my peace will be upon you. Uh, there's, uh, you're going to have a great name. Uh, these are God's people that are entrusted to you. And boy, they're going to have this land and all this. But he said, I want you to know this. David, you've been able to feed these people according to the integrity of his heart. Now, we know some things about David. David wasn't always perfect. David made many a blunders. But you know, God sees the heart, unlike what we can sometimes see. And God recognized David as a choice servant of his. David, David was a man after God's own heart. God was able to, to forgive David on numerous occasions for some pretty, pretty serious crimes. Why would God do that? Because God saw something special in David. He saw a heart that I really believe was bent toward God. Did David make mistakes? Absolutely. Uh, should he have been judged for him? That's God's business. But I know this, that God saw something unique in David and recognized that, hey, listen, he will lead and feed my people according to the integrity of his heart. Would the God, that, that God say that about all of us in our day and age? We're talking about our present. What is the integrity of our heart, and would God see fit to want to use us in accordance with that? Graduates, with regard to your present, I hope and pray that you are living today to the fullest of God's intentions. God has blessed you. He's provided for you. He's enabled you. And all of you, I believe, recognize that. You gave public testimony to that. Praise God. Certainly let, let, God, be, let God be known and praised as a result of all that he's already done for you in that area. Understand this, with regard to that, yesterday is a canceled check, as you well know. Tomorrow is a promissory note. Today is the only cash you have, so spend it wisely. Spend the president wisely. You may not get it tomorrow. Uh, be a good steward of today. Use today to the fullest of God's intention. He used the past to get you where you are. Now you're living in the present. Flesh out the beauty of God through your life. Last but not least, David had a future. And I really believe it's a future that was to be revered. We need to treat our future with respect, with reverence. All of us have a future. We're all sitting here anticipating the next hour or two hours. We're anticipating another week. Uh, we're anticipating certain things. We all plan for our future. Hey, treat it with reverence and respect. It's not here yet. It's coming. Get ready. I want you to see in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 and following, David's future, where God says to David, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will, this is God's, again, unconditional promise, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. There is no ambiguity in that statement at all. And that's why I say this is one of the great promises of Scripture. If we were looking at, the, if we were going to study the covenants that God has made with his people over time, this certainly rises to the top. This is a great promise. God says to David, with regard to his future, I will establish or set up thy seed after thee, and I'm going to establish a kingdom, and that kingdom will last forever. Think of that. Can you imagine God coming to you and giving you some kind of a, a promise to that end as an individual? 
I'm thinking, I'd be, I'd be overwhelmed. God, who am I? You're, you're going to do something through my lineage? And, and, and out of that is going to come a kingdom that's going to last forever and ever and ever? Well, with regard to that matter, it was not uh, God's will for David to build a house. Instead, God uh, wanted God to build a house for David. And so here's David's emphasis. I want to build you a house, Lord. And, and the Lord says, no, no, I'm going to build you a house instead. But the house that God is going to build is a royal house. It is a house that is a dynasty of kings. And these kings will rule and reign forever. The kingdom and his throne would be permanent. It would be a realm over which the son of David, a greater David, would reign forever. And that is an incredible promise. And I believe David fully understood this. Fully understand, understood this. Now listen, the interesting thing about David's future is that kingdom would be interrupted with the Babylonian captivity. And there would be some things where, again, they were dispersed a number of uh, uh, their people. In fact, a little bit of reading I did today because I was kind of interested in knowing a little bit more ben, about Benjamin Netanyahu and about the, his uh, tribal lineage, which one he came from. But, but it doesn't really say that they have a whole lot of that stuff going on. Now, I think that some of the, uh, th this is a fascinating study because, you know, we're talking about Israel rebuilding a temple someday. And, and uh, we believe that that will be there during the, uh, the, the tribulation years and there's going to be a millennial kingdom. And so there's a lot of things. And, and, and from what I've heard, they got some of the lineage of the priesthood already fi figured out. I, I think I've shared with you before, like anybody, the Jewish people with names of Cohen's, th that's the priestly lineage of today. So, so some of that's there, but I'd like, to, I'd like to know, you know, where the tribe of David is. I, I'd, I'd just be curious as to know who's, who's coming next or where, how are we going to get to, how are we going to get to Christ? Now, we know, listen, Christ is just going to come back in a blaze of glory uh, at the end of the tribulation years and establish himself in that kingdom. And so, but I, I thought it'd be interesting to do some of that and I didn't have enough time to investigate all that. Here's what I want to say to our graduates. God has a plan for you. He has a future for you. Just make sure that his plan and his future is the future that you walk in to. David's attention was good, but he was neither the man, nor was it the time for building the temple that he wanted to do. And so listen, your plans may be different than God's plans, but I sure hope and pray that you follow God's plans and not yours. As a result of David understanding that and, and submitting that to that, God, as a result, poured out a huge blessing on David all his days here, the remaining days, and uh, it's, a, it's a great, great uh, story to that end. F.B. Meyer said this, and I'll close. Always do better for the cause of Christ than for yourself. Always do better for the cause of God than for yourself. Now think about that. Don't let it just be a quote. Maybe write it down. You have no right to dwell in cedar while the God's ark is under curtains. And David saw that. And so David wanted to do better for the cause of God than for his own self. Hey, listen, is that your heartbeat as well? Graduates, as you go forward, I, I hope and pray that God will always be number one. He'll be the preeminent one in your life. And again, you attested to that here tonight, and, and I have no reason to question that you won't. But I hope and pray that you'll come back to base every so often. Just keep, keep remembering, hey, God, you are to be preeminent. Uh, as, as I walk down this journey, I don't know what's coming next. I know you have plans. Lord, I want your plans to be my plans. And uh, I pray that you'll lead me to that end. So, hey, listen, David had a past, he had a present, and he had a future. And so do you and I. And I trust again that we will be right where God wants us to be in the midst of it all. Well, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for our graduates. Thank you for our time here tonight. It's been a blessing to hear what you have done and are doing. And we know you're not finished with them yet. Lord, that's across the board. Every one of us sitting here tonight, we know that you have work for us yet to do. And I pray, Father, that you would find willing subjects that are open uh, to hearing that still small voice as you seek to lead us and direct us through this, this pilgrimage called life. And I pray, Father, that we are found to be right smack in the center of your will, doing your work your way. I pray, Father, you'd find upon all of us that uh, we could be called your servant. Uh, Lord, that you would be pleased with the service that we render unto you. What a high and holy calling. Lord, we may never rule over people, uh, per se, but Lord, uh, if we're walking with you and doing what you want us to do, Lord, that, that's what matters, and I trust that you get glory as a result of it. Keep a hedge of protection about our, our young people, Lord, as they, they make plans for the future and, again, uh, head into a whole new experience, at least for some, as they enter into college and even graduate school. And I pray, Father, that you just guide their steps. Uh, Lord, uh, may they continue to, to uh, 
run to you and, and trust you and, and believe in you uh, as they ex experience these new, uh, new challenges that come their way. And may you get glory from their lives. And Lord, for that, we'd certainly thank you. So Lord, you have blessed us here tonight. We give you praise. We want to thank you for our time. And we give thanks for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I do think we ought to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus here. So let's do that here. And then we'll be back for just a brief announcement with refreshments to follow here. So 397. Hymn number 397 our hymn books. Let's stand once again as we sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back, no turning back. Though no one joins. and give you instructions for downstairs, but we would like to take some photos and portraits of the graduates, and if your family wants to be in it too, we can take those as well somewhere on the platform. So Pastor, up to your discretion if after the ice cream or in between or before then. Okay, so that's a good idea. I like that idea. So we're going to have the graduates before anybody disperses. Come on up here and get a picture right away, but the rest of you, I want to encourage you to head on downstairs. I'll tell you why. You know, sometimes we have a tendency to linger and enjoy fellowship up here, and I get it. I like fellowship as much as you do, but you know what's going to happen is your ice cream is melting. So if you want to eat ice cream that is still cold and not melty, come on downstairs and enjoy fellowship. The rest of uh, the graduates can stay up here, and uh, we'll just enjoy some time down there. Let's bless the refreshments, and uh, trust we'll have a good time of uh, the company.